Hey, Hi, hey. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. Good, nice shirt. Thank you very much. I thought I'd go colourful today. Very, very yeah. tropical. Yeah, I thought, you know, it's summertime and all that. Where are you based? Are you in London? I'm in, I'm in Putney. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah where are you? Oh, maybe you shouldn't tell me where you are. Eh? Oh, <laughs> Crouch End, it's all right. It's a big place. Yeah. <laughs> Well, don't give me your exact address, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not the best thing to do in an interview, and then that's it. We're like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Not a great way to start an interview either. Oh, well. So, cheers. Cheers. Chin -chin. <laughs> cheers. Is that a Waitrose mug? It isn't. I actually got an Amazon. It kind of matches my... It does. I'm digging this vibe. You're very summery. Yeah. It's a great... I didn't, really, I didn't really mean to go so crazy today before, <laughs> but I could just walk up and be like, you know what? Let's be fabulous today. Oh, let's be fabulous. I love that. I love that. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of research on you. You seem to have always had a love for creativity. So I, I saw that you attended local theatre, you know, in, in Scotland when you were young. You won the BBC Blast talent competition at 15, and then you started doing uh, radio sketches for BBC. So you seem to have always had this, I don't know, creative drive or this, this and that like hustle in you from a young age where most 15 year olds are in a park kicking a ball. You seem to do stuff that's a bit out of the box. So yeah, where, where did this love for creativity come from? And then I guess why acting? Uh, well, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in school, really. And I think I was one of those like problem kids that my mum and dad have I had, and they're like, "Oh my god, what are we gonna do with Mark?" Because like <laughs> my sister's really smart, and so is my brother. It's like, oh, but I was just the odd one. I was the odd odd one out. Um, and I was dyslexic as well. I say I was. I still am. It doesn't go away. <laughs> <sad. laughs> <laughs> so like right what, what can I do and then they ended up putting me in some sort of like acting class and I hated it when I was younger ah. they were like act like animals and stuff I was like this is ridiculous so I didn't like it at first um, and then I ended up going back to it my mum like, mum forced me to do it again later on in life I think it was like 11 maybe 10 11 yeah and uh and I ended up doing it and I loved it. And then the drama teacher came out, she's like, to my mum, she's like, sorry, I have to have a word with you. My mum was like, oh my God, what has he done? What has he done? No, I can't do anything right. And then she was like, he's really talented and he has Ooh, something. So nice. You should definitely get him to come back. And then that was it. And I think um, it's self-worth. I think yeah. that you can give that to a kid of going, actually, do you know what? you're good at something and you can find that for them and then go right this is your thing so really go for it if you can give that to a kid that's huge yeah. and now I feel if in today's society kids are not encouraged enough to explore their qualities what they can potentially be good at or whatever and when they do it's too late sometimes mm -hmm. so I got really lucky I got really lucky and I found out quite early on so I, I've just finished watching The Last Kingdom um all the way to the end season four Fantastic, absolutely loved it. Your character is so badass, he's so cool. Um, definitely like brings a lot of heart and warmth, I think, to the show. When creating the character, how much of, of Mark have you brought to Finnan or vice versa? Has he, has that character given you anything as, as a person? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, uh, really it's kind of like you and the given circumstances to a certain mm -hmm. degree. And I always get, I always say to like, uh, especially people in the actors community, I go, right, make a list. As actors, we're really good at making lists. So write down on one side, how your, like your attributes and then your character's attributes and then link them together. So then you can see how close you are to the part and how much you have to work on. So if you are playing a psychopath, then I would say I'm not a psychopath. So. <laughs> Or am I? Ooh, oh, we don't know. <laughs> Thank goodness this is a that. Zoom call. <laughs> I'm not a person. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you go, right, okay, I'm completely not like this person. So how do I bring myself closer, Mark, to that character? Mm. And I think you have to try and I always talk about it. And you have to try and find your own humanity to bring you closer to the part. 
And then as well as that, you're going to make some amazing discoveries about yourself. Some of them you're going to like, maybe some you're not going to like, you know, but people are complex. We know we're complex animals um, and you have to embrace that, you know, yeah. and it feels as if some of the best actors out there, they really just go for it. They yeah. really embody the, the good and the bad parts of themselves. And it all comes down to choice in life. You know, you choose to be good or you choose to be bad. You choose to help others or you choose not to. It's all choice. Mm. So it's the exact same in our game as well, you know. Yeah, making the decisions for your characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. And really exploring it. Like, I, I think, I, I see <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, was, I was uh, walking, I caught myself, I was treating myself. I went, I went and got a coffee and uh, ended up getting one of those almond croissants and they're massive. Oh, I love those. Oh man, they're so good, so good. Okay. And then uh, I was just walking around and uh, I'm Crouch End in London and there's a lovely park with like woods and all that and I was walking through. And um, I came to this massive green and I seen these kids like running about. They probably shouldn't have been actually. Probably, <laughs> you know, actually when I think about it, but they're playing with sticks and pretending they were fighting each other. I was like, oh my God, I'd do that. Yeah, in <laughs> real life, like in, in life, that's what you do, yeah. Yeah, and, but the thing is, these kids believe it so much and as we get older sometimes it gets harder to believe mm. and you know let your imagination take over but with kids they do it expertly they're mm. so good at mm. it you know? and sometimes it's actually really nice to go on a set and just go actually i'm going to switch off from the, the real world and i'm just going to live in this world and see what it's like mm -hmm. and you get, interesting yeah and you get to live many lives I mean, it must be so much fun to just be in that world where you're fighting and you just, you know, it's, it's a world you could never really be in, live in, so. A hundred percent. Yeah, especially, especially when you're doing those big battles and um, <laughs> you get you get to do all the cool moves and kill, kill people and be all masculine and macho and all that. And actually, if it's probably, probably a real circumstance, you were like, oh my God, just run, retreat. <laughs> <laughs> I would be an archer for sure. Yeah. I'm on a horse, that's me. <laughs> like, Spe speaking of which, just, this is not one of my questions, but how long does it take you to actually learn? Because it's, it's choreographed, right? The stunts, the, the battles, the fight scenes are all choreographed. And then, you know, you, you obviously rehearse and stuff. But yeah, what is that like? What is the process? It, it just depends really how big it is. Normally, we're quite good at it now. So... Uh, maybe at the start it took a, a bit longer, but actually all the guys like Team Utrud are quite good at picking stuff up. So yeah. we can normally we normally just need one rehearsal beforehand. And normally you have to rehearse anyway just for safety. So we'd have one rehearsal either at the end of the shooting day or maybe in between shooting days or whatever, or on a day off. Hopefully it's not a day off. Yeah. Um yeah, and then yeah, we'll just go and do it. That's it. Oh. It's, it's really fun. And then sometimes, well, this is very, very often this happens. A director will have an idea or, or they'll need more content. So then they'll just teach you there and then. And that can be really stressful where they just teach you in five minutes and then you have to do it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You don't want to hurt the stunt, the stunt guys. I'm always like, I don't want to, because everyone has to go home at the end of the day. Mm, sure. So sometimes I like end up hurting a guy and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But it's like, <laughs> keep forgetting they've got like, like plastic riot gear on yeah, yeah. So protection anything. yeah yeah and it's plastic swords anyway you know when we're fighting <laughs> apart from close-ups then we use real something sometimes but um yeah i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry i am so sorry yeah, so yeah. We're playing these macho warriors and then we're like oh my god oh my god oh yeah beer i'm so sorry about that oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, hey, be more aggressive. It's fine. It's okay. I don't want to hurt you. Really toss me. Really do it. And I'm like, ah. Um, tell me what the audition process was like for The Last Kingdom. Like, how many auditions did you have? Um, how did you prep for it? And then if you have, like, one or two sort of golden nuggets, like, with regards to audition tips or things to maybe think about for actors going into auditions. That would be great. Um, yeah, I, I was just, uh, I, ended, I think I ended up having two auditions. So I, I just got a recall. So I ended up going in, doing the piece, and then getting a recall, meeting the director and producer and the cast and director, and then that was it, really. Hmm. Um, 
Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a simple one. Yeah. But I learned previously, like a year and a half before, I actually went up for season one to play someone who was killed with an arrow. Oh, really? Think, yeah. And I only clicked the other day because you only get, you don't get the full scripts out. Sometimes mm. you just get the sides just for protection. And uh, yeah, I went really, really well. Maybe that's why the casting director got me back. But I think me uh, rolling around on the floor, pretending I've been stabbed and <laughs> shot with an arrow really worked. But the director was like full on, like taking the camera off and going right into my face and me using the discomfort of it and all that. And yeah. it was really fun. I was like, that is the craziest audition I've ever had. But the actual one for Finnan was was quite easy and it was really fun as well. I, I would say the biggest thing, if I could tell myself when I was younger, um, book the room, not the job. Mm. That's the biggest thing. So many young actors out there, they get it wrong. They don't book the room. You know, there's so many things out there that are going against you. Like, especially if they're trying to, like a casting director, try to build up a family. So they might cast the father first, who's the main actor. He might be an A-lister. And maybe you're really good for it, but actually you don't look like a family, so the job's not going to go in your favour. So there's so many things that are just out of your control. So concentrate on just doing good work. Mm. And eventually, if you do good work consistently, that director, casting director, will find you a job. Mm. He will get you one. I swear that is how it works. But so many people just try and concentrate on booking the job. Look, you just turn up and do your work. That is it at the end of the day. You know, you go here. This is my interpretation of the character. This is all my work. It was lovely meeting you. Um, let's just get to it. And then whether or not you want me, great. If you don't, then it's fine. At least you can see, you know, my talent or mm. how much effort I've actually put in. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've been in so many webinars over this lockdown period with casting directors and they, so many of them say that we'll bring you in do your best, but we might only find a role for you in five years time, but we'll remember, we'll remember you, you know, and it's yeah. happened where it's literally been about five years, but they've remembered that one actor and they thought, right, this is the one, this is the one that they're perfect for and brought them yeah. in and, you know, then they end up getting it. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I think, a, I think a lot of people as well, um, they come, they come into the audition room and it's like any meeting really, you know, they want to be loved and liked and wanted. Mm. Sometimes the needs are stronger than the material and you're like, no, just concentrate on your work. That's, it. that's the thing that's going to get you the job. Be a nice person. Yeah, for sure. But just concentrate on, on your work, what you're good at. So you don't have to get them to like you or love you. Just be friendly, be nice, and then go, here, this is my work. Boom. Yeah, be present. Hopefully, yeah, you make a big impact. Um, right, so you have booked the role and uh, you now have to prep. So I'm super intrigued what your process is. And I know, you know, it's, it can be, this could be a whole nother subject in its own, but um, what do you do to the text to bring your character to life once you've been given the script and you have an idea of the story and where your character is going? Um, so first, first of all, I'll do, I call it detective work. Mm. So I'll be a detective and I'll try and find out more stuff about the character and I'll try and analyze them. So if you ever see a detective when they're interviewing someone, they want to mm. know everything about them, mm -hmm. you know, their motives, what makes them tick, their, their psychology. And that's the way I look at it. So then I'll look for evidence in the text and then I'll try to build up this kind of character, the structure. And then once I have a structure, then I can start to, you know, put little things in here and there. But as well as that, I think it's important to know, first of all, where you fit in in the entirety mm. of show, yeah. the play, the film. I think there's so many people out there who just get caught up in their own little world. And you're like, hey, man, what is your real role here? It's to help the story along. It's to support the main actor, to help him tell his story. How can you help him? And maybe a couple of times you could be like, here, maybe I can bring out the fun the fun in this character that's maybe not been explored. So then that's my job is to bring that element out of that other other actor, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that should be a dynamic uh, part of their character. And then we can have a relationship and blah, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. um, I always say if you are, I, I don't know, making coffee in a movie or whatever, 
then it's, you've got two lines, that's it. Just make it really simple. Yeah. Really simple. You don't have to go crazy. You go overboard with that. Yeah. If you go overboard, you can make too much of it in the dance. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, stop trying to steal the scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're there just to carry it along. Uh, so, yeah, um, break, break down the text, break everything down, um, and then know, know your place within it. And then I've got ways of, like, I've got several lists. A lot of uh, actors do that as well. Mm. Uh, maybe make a list of, like, what people see about you and then what you see about others. And then, you're, again, that's you gathering evidence. What's like you? What's the character? Is the character like you? Are they not like you? And if they're not like you, then what do you have to work on? And if yeah. they are like you, what can you use from your own life that can really bring the character alive? You know, and that's the vulnerable part, you know, and I think that's the thing with our job is that you need to be brave. Yes. You need to be a bit fearless and you need to open up and be open. And sometimes that's so vulnerable to do that, you know, and as guys from the West Coast of Scotland, you're taught, <laughs> no matter what in life, don't cry, yeah. don't do any emotion, that's it. But actually, it's nice to open that up and then, you know, show people out there that, you know, like... You know, people are in pain as well. And you're watching mm. someone on TV and hopefully if the piece has a message, then you can connect with the audience and it mm. makes them contemplate their life or it makes them just think or have a debate. So yeah. I think there's a lot of people out there um, who, you know, it's just, we, we think it's just for entertainment, but art does have the power to make people think. Oh yeah, you totally. Know, you know, um, and you can see that just throughout time. When the, the Greeks, when they were educating the populace, they were doing plays for like five hours, six hours, mm -hmm. debating after it, you know, these massive big ideas. Uh, so yeah, I think we do have that power in us. And we, and we call that, well, I, I call it the, the big idea. So <clears throat> if I end up picking up a piece of text or a show and it has a message that's bigger than me, Mm -hmm. I will make sure it's my responsibility as the actor, as the performer, to make the audience aware of this issue and then present it to them. And it's up to them what they want to do with it. And then there are other jobs where you just do it for cash. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. I mean, we, I, I need to survive. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> you need to pay the rent. <laughs> yeah, we need to yeah, pay, pay the rent. Yeah, literally. But the times that you do get those really nice pieces, um, yeah, it's just great to... It's great to work on mm. but does that kind of cover it? i feel as if man i could speak for hours no i, I mean that's that's fantastic i mean i i would love to like sit and really break it down but i mean I, i've got so much i, I want to know from you but no that i mean that's perfect it's um yeah it's your process and you know there's little bits and bobs there that who's ever watching will hopefully take something away from that um as yeah. i already have so um yeah just bring your truth there eh? just bring your truth that's, that's it and that's the scariest yeah. part yeah, that's exactly. Part. So the being vulnerable and it's it's opening that heart up to yeah. the world, which can be very scary. Embracing it as well. Yeah. Really embracing it and going for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The good, the, good, the bad, the ugly, just run with it. And I Everything. swear Yeah, and just let your impulses come forward and you know, you'll start to do really, really good work. Yeah, yeah. So you've you've okay, so we've we've gone through your um text analysis and all of that you're now on set and the director says action how do you as an actor ensure that all your character choices come through in the scene once they've said action when you have time constraints you have nerves which i'm sure everyone gets nervous you have other actors that have prepped a different way uh there's so many different elements on set so how do you maintain that focus and get the take that you intend to get good question um i feel as if that's where that's the difference between you know a civilian and an actor or someone who's coming on i know that they do a lot of uh, street castings and i mm. think that's the difference between an actor and just someone who's been picked off the street is that you know minutes are like equivalent of thousands of pounds at a time you know so you need yeah. to be on it and ready and focused and i think it just comes down to preparation that's mm. it. You just, you prepare and you prepare and you prepare and you're ready for it, no matter what, you know? So if someone does spoil your shot or 
we'd end up doing it if we we're doing a scene together and someone's carrying on at the side of camera, then it's enough just to get by and I can concentrate my attention on you and then just get mm. the scene over. Mm. And then at the end they'd be like, mate, come on, yeah. you move. Ah. But, really, technique and you know, it really does come into it. But um I think people just have their own process. Mm. Like I like to listen to music if I've got a really stressful scene coming up. I remove myself from the set. Like I'll, I'll just go off and spend a little bit of time with myself um, and make sure I don't get caught up on, in the drama of the set. Like if we've only got five minutes, 10 minutes to shoot it, then I make sure that I, I don't bring that stress onto the onto the screen because mm. you'll see it. So it's about removing yourself. A lot of people listen to music. So some people just, some cast members just talk to themselves. Yeah. And then you can just go into it. It just completely depends on the on the mm. scene. And about probably that day, I've already prepped and prepared. But what I love to do is on the day is when I'm you're on the makeup chair, is I'll get my sides. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll, they'll give you sides anyway, just in case. And I'll take a pen or a pencil, and I'll just start to jot down ideas, just loads. And then I'll put it down into maybe I'll pick three that I think are really good. So that if I do do them in the scene, I'm like, actually, I had a go at it. I managed to rehearse it. I, I tried it out. It didn't work. But sometimes you do try it and it does work. But I'll, I'll have three key ideas and I'll just go for it. Mm. And uh, and that means I'm, I'm doing something new and yeah. I'm always thinking, you know. Are you are you at a stage now after playing Finnan for three seasons, right? It's three seasons. Um, where if they had to quickly add in a new scene, I don't know if this does happen on The Last Kingdom sometimes, but are you at a place where you're so comfortable with Finnan that they could give you a scene and say, you've got an hour, we need to do this, and you could prep? Or does that not really happen on, on, on your set? Or Not really. Like, I personally would struggle with that because my dyslexia okay. like, it takes a bit oh, longer. Yeah, sure. Like some people could just pick up so fast. I'm like, oh my God, I hate you. <laughs> oh my God. You don't understand how easy you have it. But I mean, that in itself is a, a, is, is, is a good thing as well. Because then I have to do double the amount of work as everyone else. Mm. And it's always the time where I'm tired is when I come up with the idea that no one has thought about. Mm. And that's the thing that I'll do. And that's the one that so anytime that I overdo it, overdo it or whatever, well, I feel as if I'm getting to the stage where actually I've got it now, I'll pick something up, I'll find something I didn't even know was there. And that is real art. Mm. When you find something you didn't even know existed and you're like, boom, that is it. That's the thing in the scene. Let's That's run with that. That's the gem. Yeah. That, that is the gem. Um, but yeah, we don't really do that on the show. Yeah. It's, we're pretty much on it, I think. It's because we've got a lot of work to get through. That, the writers have to be prepared. So all the drafts have to be done by probably, I think it's two weeks before we start filming. Ah. And yet we do get rewrites, but there'll be small changes. Well, hopefully. Mm. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. Um, so I have, a, I have a question just going back to preparation. Do you think an actor can be overprepared? Do you think that can, being too overprepared can then take away from the magic of whatever it is that you're trying to find? Uh, yes, 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 and no. I think you've got to um, have lots of ideas, mm-hmm. and then you've got to turn up on set and have an idea of where you want to, what you want to show, what you want to show the audience. Because um, we're telling a story at the end of the day, so how, how do we want to show the audience, or, or you know, character's journey, or how we want to uh, show the audience, like um, whatever storyline or beat mm-hmm. you're trying be at that particular time but uh, you need to let it go if yeah. something's not working you just let it go or if someone gives you something if someone acts in a certain way or they give you a certain impulse then you should use it and that's what makes acting really really real and free and weirdly more free and and liberating than real life mm. so i think in real life we always have some sort of persona or act or whatever we're all, we do it all the time, you know, when, when someone's like, oh, how are you? And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. And you're like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> so it's nice sometimes when you turn up and set and you're like, actually, I can use my, my real energy that, for that mm. day. And then if the actor's been vulnerable with me, then man, you know, I'll open up to them. 
or if they make me impulsive and angry, then I'll just embrace it and I'll do that. Mm. And I'll be more free and real in that moment than maybe other times in my life, you know? Mm. It's really strange when you think about it. Liberating. Yeah. It's liberating. Yeah. I think the more you can take that into your everyday life, the better and stronger you are. And we've all met people like that who, especially as they get older, it's that um, they don't give a fuck mode. And it doesn't mean they're an absolute dick. It doesn't mean they're not a nice person. They're just upfront and honest. And that's so good. Yeah, refreshing. Yeah, it's refreshing. So refreshing because you just know where you stand with everyone. You know, it's like... Talk to me about the actors community. Um, So we mentioned it earlier, but now I just want to hear a little bit more. What inspired it? Was it a uh, lockdown passion project or is this something that has been, you know, an idea that sort of you wanted to do for a while? Um, and yeah, it's got a really cool initiative with, the, you know, raising funds for the NHS and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So just, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so I've always kind of wanted to set something up just to help actors out, like young actors specifically, or people just breaking into the industry who just need more knowledge. Um, but I just not, I've not had the time to do it. So as soon as this happened, I was like, well, <laughs> now is the time because there's no <laughs> after work. <laughs> Lots of time. And I was doing a job at the time and that ended up stopping. I was, we ended up filming in Rome. It was like um, the epicenter near enough. I was like, oh my oh, God. Oh, goodness. Right, so I was like, right, let's just do this. And uh, I ended up reaching out to all my friends who, you know, their shows had been cancelled or paused. And so there's actually quite a few members in the the last kingdom helping out mm. um but yeah we just, we just all kind of got together and went look why don't we just try and help people out and i think that's what it is it's just honest um upfront advice and it's useful stuff that you can actually apply to like work on set or on a stage mm. and you, i was like that doesn't exist anywhere Never do you get people like that. Joseph Milson who ended up coming on and he's an associate of the Royal Shakespeare Company. He's done so many plays with him. He's a, an associate. He ended up coming on and helping out and doing a class. And I'm like, oh my God, who else can I reach out? Like there's other friends that I have out there. I'm like, maybe they can come on and talk about this or that. Mm-hmm. And as well as that, we've got free classes as well. So it's like, well, people can't afford the classes. And I always wanted, I said to everyone and everyone totally agreed is like, well, let's make this really affordable. Yeah. So we've made it affordable. And for people that really don't have any money, we've got free classes as well. So it's just about this idea of building a community up where people can support each other. Mm. And this idea of fanning each other's flames. Like, I think a, 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 there's a lot of people in life that want to see you fail. Yeah. And that's so sad. And even with my little nephew, I see, like, I'm like, oh my God, your friend, your 12 year old pal, like, he doesn't want you to do well. That's so <laughs> tragically sad. Yeah. It's like you need to surround yourself with pals who want the best for you. Yeah, lift so you up. Like, yeah. And lift, and lift you up, exactly. Mm. Like you say, you know? And I was like, well, that's what I'd love to try and provide, you know? Something well, like yeah, I definitely think, I mean, I've been in, you know, a couple of, of the, the webinars and um, I, I've loved it. I really have. Mm. It's like I told you, it's really raw and refreshing and uh, just really real. And I think that's that's what I love about it so much. And like you said, it's people that are working in the industry. And so the advice that's coming through is so, it's so current and it's so, you know, practical. It's practical advice that you can yeah. apply to your life yeah. as an actor trying to improve, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I think it's a really, really great thing. And it's that idea that, you know, we don't have all the answers either. Because mm. there's, some, there's some teachers or coaches, whatever you want to call them, they they feel as if they they have all the answers and that's mm-hmm. wrong because everyone's different, you know? So we always say, look, we'll, we'll advise you and we are learning just as much as you because you never stop learning. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, yourself is like with every field in life, life you're always going to be learning mm-hmm. you know, from each other and that's really inspiring. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more inspirational videos just like this, then don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking right over here. Also leave us a comment in the section below and tell us who you guys would like us to break the ice with next.